Trust. Discussions and answers to questions do not involve the rendering of personalized investment advice, but are limited to the dissemination of general information. A professional advisor should be consulted before implementing any of the options presented. Encompass More Asset Management is registered as an investment advisor with the SEC and only transacts business in states where it is properly registered or is excluded or exempted from registration requirements. Registration with the SEC does not imply a certain level of skill or training. And there they are. The guys are here. Clint Smith, Gaylon Bargerstock. GCES. Gentlemen, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good, good to morning. have you both with us. Clinton, he's, he's always directing, isn't he? Gary? Yeah, he is. Yeah. Man, oh man, look at the camera. Right? Yeah, the camera, it's, it's at the wrong angle. It's, I have to turn to the side and then look over at well, you. Well, do you want to go over there and yeah. adjust? Go, go no, it's adjust. All right. It's all right. We'll do it. Yeah. I always stand on this side because I get a better camera angle. Uh huh. Yeah. You the guy catch your good side? Yeah, is this it's my what good it is? side. You don't care yeah. about Galen's good side? No, uh uh-uh. uh. No. He yeah. <laughs> nice. Nice. Hey guys, uh, a big question here. I think it's a really good question too. Um and, and the question is, do I have enough money to even try to save for retirement? What does it take for me to call G C E S and say, Galen, figure this out for me? There might be people out there who don't think that they have enough money or that they can make enough money that it would even make a difference. Yeah, so, I mean, it it was brought to our attention over the weekend that, you know, somebody didn't think they had enough money to work with us. And, you know, it ends up the balance that they had was more than, way more than enough to work with us. So Mm -hmm. I think that the expectations that people have on how much money you need to retire is kind of like almost one of those imaginary sky things like it's so high that you think you have to have all this money saved when the reality is you know if you have nothing you can start an account you know and start creating your own wealth and if you want an annuity you know there's minimums um, on annuity vessels but usually they're like five thousand dollars to start Mm -hmm. so there's not really any certain minimum number because you everybody starts somewhere so there's no no way that you shouldn't start investing there are plenty of people who are younger and just getting started in life though that are living paycheck to paycheck or or not even able to do that and and they might say i just i cannot afford to put something aside yeah it happens a lot i mean usually uh people at some point 20s i mean even us we didn't really start things until like a year or two ago and I know I look like I'm in my 30s, but I did turn 40 last year or this year. So, I mean, we just started in the last two years, and we've been doing this our whole life, like for the last 12 years. So So you've been doing this for other people for many, many years, but uh, for yourselves, you're just really getting on the horse? Well, no. I mean, what I like to say is we're like everybody else. I mean, we've actually, we've had investment accounts and stuff like that, but like other people in this world, we've had to cash them in in order to do something else with our life. So mm-hmm. we, even though we know the roles, we know that the roles have to be broken in order to achieve goals that you need right now. Mm-hmm. And there's a couple ways to look at it. Uh, if someone, you know, if you're sitting on $100,000, $20,000, $300,000, you have enough money to work with us. So those people do have enough money, but if you don't have anything saved, you can start doing that with us also. Mm-hmm. So you can have a $0 balance in your savings account and start putting money in every month and start doing that with us. We can help you through that process. And if you've been saving money your whole life and you do have over $5,000, we can also help you move that into an annuity and figure out how that would work with your retirement. Mm-hmm. So that sort of guidance uh, that folks might not even consider is worthy of, of your time. Uh, and certainly they might think, you know, it's, it's just, I just I need to keep that aside in case there's a drastic emergency. Uh, You can actually do things with it now. And and it's not out of reach for them. It's not out of reach for them. And, you know, one of the other things that I would like to say, and, you know, I tread lightly on the situation. But, you know, a lot of times you might already have an annuity and you might have had that annuity for four or five years and maybe it's not performing. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's something that you should also. Yeah, I don't have any new money to invest with anything. But maybe I should have somebody take a look at what I have and give a little second opinion. Because a lot of times, you know, with the way the world is right now, we're able to make some different moves and adjustments to get people set back on the right track because inflation's been so high. And now it's starting to finally, you know, come down a little. I suspect that there are plenty of people out there as well 
who don't even know the terms. Um, and, and, you know, everybody's been in that boat at one yeah. point or another. I don't know what you're talking. You say the word annuity. I don't know what annuity is. You say, um, you know, uh, investment. I don't know what investments are. Um, there, there are a lot of folks out there yeah. that are, that are like that. And, and that's an intimidating word to them. Honestly, once you learn all those words, you can basically get your insurance license. <laughs> like that, that's pretty much what the whole test is. And, and that is, I mean, just going back to whenever we first got our original life insurance, life health and annuity license, that's what it is that you're, you're learning because one single word in a huge paragraph of really big words can change the entire meaning of everything that you're talking about where mm -hmm. you might think, Oh, this applies to me because you know, all of these words in this paragraph and there's one little word in there that makes it doesn't matter. doesn't apply to you. Mm -hmm. doesn't even make sense. Whatever you're thinking is not right. And that's really what, that's a big part of why I think things are so confusing for people because they're not doing it every day. Do you know what I mean? They haven't gone mm -hmm. through to get their uh, life health and annuity license um, or all of the financial advisor license that Galen has. And that's why, I really think people don't think that they need a financial advisor. They think, oh, you know, I only have 50 grand. You know, I have my pension. I'm fine. I don't really need someone like that. And we've fought with that a lot, of, a long time because we started out working with postal employees and a lot of postal employees just think, oh, well, I work for the government. I don't actually need a financial advisor mm -hmm. until they get to retirement time and find out they do need someone like that to make it all happen and put it together. You know, Galen, he just said something that I, I think is pretty important, uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and he used the word pension. Uh, you don't hear about the old-fashioned pensions that, uh, that we used to hear about all the time. Companies had pension plans for their employees, yeah. and those went away in favor of 401Ks for the most part uh, or, or some other type of plan. Uh, and, and there are probably a lot of folks out there who are getting on toward retirement age that no longer have a pension plan from their company that think, well, that money just went away and, and it's not even a part of, of my life now. That's not true. That money's still there for The me. money is still there for you, yeah. And, and sometimes, you know, that pension plan might have been bought from another company and it might have switched names and then you might have got a new name in the mail and then another new name in the mail, but that money is still titled for you, mm -hmm. you know, in most cases. And, you know, it really depends on the scenario whether you can start drawing that at 60 or 65 or 62. So what I encourage people to do, you know, when I meet with them just in general is, you know, think about where they worked, where were they employed, did they ever see paperwork, even if they don't have paperwork now, and maybe kind of reach out and call some people to see. And a lot of times, you know, you're going to be working with friends and talking to friends. They know also if they got a pension from there. So mm -hmm. you, you just need to maximize what you get and make sure if there was something, take it. So and I'm guessing if there are a lot of people that sit down with Galen um, and, and talk about uh, their financial situation and their financial life, that map that goes back all the way to when they first got out of college or got out of high school and started working, uh, that they don't know what they have until they sit down for this conversation. Yeah. All of a sudden, I get, bet you there's a lot of people smiling once yeah. they leave that initial meeting. Yeah. If you update your address every time you move, you won't really have the issue of not knowing where your stuff is. But even me, I whenever I was in the Marine Corps, I put into the thrift savings plan. That's the same thing all federal employees have. It's just like a 401k for government workers or military. And we moved and we moved, and then we're finally living here in Indiana, I'm like, hey, I think I still had an account there. Granted, it was a lot of money, mm -hmm. uh, but all I needed to do was go on and update my address, and I still have that retirement account that I completely forgot about. So if people are changing addresses or moving, and you had a pension before, your stuff is probably all getting mailed to that place that you used to live. So yeah. updating your addresses every time you move is really important to help make sure that you're getting things to the right place. I'd like to say making a shoebox for retirement is something you'll do in your 20s, but I know I never did it. Uh, and a lot of people out there probably won't, but yeah. it's really keeping an eye. One of one of the other things I would say, too, that we've seen a lot with people recently locally is people have been in the same account for 15 years. They got an inheritance, you know, from their father or their mother passing away, and it hasn't made any money in 20 years, and they haven't looked at it. They haven't done anything with it, but the account also hasn't grown because the fees are so high. Mm -hmm. So if you have an account that you haven't looked at in five-plus years, it's really going to make more sense for you to come in and sit down with us just because if it's been there for a while, we can move it into something better. And they're coming out with new, better products all the time that might not have been available to you five, six years ago whenever you got it before. Galen, papers get lost. People lose track of things. Um, mm -hmm. 
fires happen. Um, yeah. You know, I don't know what I have. I, I, if I think back, uh, all the jobs that I've had, I, I don't even know if there was a plan. There are ways to f- recover that information. Just the information yeah. is going to be the first step. The information is the first step. You know, the name of the employer, you know, a lot of times you are still getting some some mail from somebody. You know, it might not have dollar amounts, but people give me random letters from XYZ company saying, hey, you have this to claim. And then they have no clue what it is. They call out and then they find out it's like $250 a month for life. So, I mean, it's good stuff to to look into. We just got our hands on a new software system so I can look up pensions. I don't have every pension and ever existed, but I do have a lot, like 750 pensions. And like you said, it's they're non-existent anymore. You know, a lot of people are doing 401ks or state or federal pensions, so those ones I can of course look up easily. Mm-hmm. But I, I have a little bit more ways to look in for people now because technology. There are little investigation that has yeah. to be done, but yeah. it's worthwhile. Yeah, and and GCES is the place to start. Forty-five minutes to an hour. <laughs> it's all it takes. Can get it all taken care of, uh, and then follow up meetings from there. But uh, it, we have been able to help a lot of people. We've been able to help businesses set up four hundred one ks. So we're really happy that we decided to make the switch last year and start working with more than just federal employees and working with people locally. I know that Galen's car probably appreciates it because he didn't put a hundred thousand miles on his car last year. Uh, so that's always a good thing. <laughs> It has been nice, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so if people want to get involved with GCES and, and start to find out what it is that they have as assets so that they can plan for their retirement, what should they do? Uh, you can call Lorraine. Lorraine uh, is the one that sets all of our appointments for all of our agents. Her number is 724-915-0008, uh, and you can reach her directly to set up an appointment. She can answer any questions about what you would need for that appointment, and that is the direct line to schedule an appointment. Or you can just stop into our office 9 to 5, Monday through Friday, right on Philadelphia Street, 1780 Philadelphia Street. Beautiful. All right. So that's the GCES segment. Let's uh, take a moment and talk about United Way. Kicked it off. I'm sure you're very, very excited. I did want to get – I was going to bring that up in the beginning, but then we started talking about financial stuff and I got sidetracked. Uh, A great night for Indiana on Friday. So we had our first ever carnival kickoff. Uh, We shut down part of 8th Street, North 8th Street. It was amazing to see how many people came in to set up. I mean, to set up a whole carnival in three hours with games, prizes, everything, really took a lot. We had, uh, I believe, the football and softball. We had some teams from a high school that came and helped. Thank you, Patricia Brzezanski. Uh, So a huge amount of setup. It was a great night. It was a profitable night for the United Way. And we had some fire dancers. We had some stilt walkers. And I released my goal of $888,888. So mm-hmm. all eights across the board. There you go. Yeah. There you go. And so the campaign is underway, and we'll hear more and more about it and about the events that are planned in association yep. with it as, as we get it rolling. Here. Yeah. Next up, we were having a golf outing on September 9th at the Indiana Country Club. It's $150 per person, and we definitely have, I want to say, about 10 to 20 foursomes left available. So if you haven't called in to schedule your foursome, it is Monday, September 9th, next month at the Indiana Country Club. We still have foursomes available for the golf outing. Clint, Galen, thanks so much for the visit today. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Have a good day. It is the voice of Indiana County. It's WCCS 101.1 FM, AM 1160, and WCCSradio.com. Boomer Sports on the way next, and then Josh is back with us from the WCCS Newsroom on this Monday morning. It's 25 minutes after 8 o'clock. We're on the way today to 68 degrees. We're starting at 66, so not so far to climb. This is Boomer Esiason with Sports Minute, sponsored by Fisher Investments. Today's birthday shout-out goes to Kirk Cousins. The 36-year-old Atlanta quarterback is recovering from a torn Achilles suffered in Week 8 last season. While the Falcons won't play him in preseason, the four-time Pro Bowler fondly recalls that, as a rookie fourth-rounder whose NFL future was far from certain, it was a big memory. I'm Boomer Esiason.
We just want to have enough money for retirement. And travel to visit our grandchildren. I understand. That's why at Fisher Investments, we start by getting to know each other. So I can learn about your family, lifestyle, goals and needs, allowing us to tailor your portfolio. What about commission-based products? We don't sell those. We're a fiduciary, obligated to act in your best interest. So how do your management fees work? We have a simple management fee based on the value of your portfolio. So we do better when you...